Good morning. On behalf of Save the Rivers staff and board, welcome to Save the Rivers 34th Annual Winter Environmental Conference. I'm John Peach, Executive Director of Save the River, and I'd like to welcome Clayton's Mayor Norma Zimmer to say a few words. Norma? Good morning, everyone. You can always depend on me for a few words. <laughs> That's what I'm best at. It's great to see so many people here today enjoying Clayton in the wintertime. And we're happy to have you here, encourage you to come back this summer. And I want to say thank you to John Peach and his staff for putting this together and have everybody here. And what a great job they do to keep this river gin clear for all of us. But Clayton is doing our part to do the infrastructure to not have issues here. We're about 1st of August, we should have the last phase of the uh, upgrade to our wastewater treatment plant. And our operators have done a great job as they work through the conversion. So hopefully we won't have the green machine across the street anymore. And we're really excited about having that. You got to remember that our raw water line is at Bartlett Point. And we consistently get good water in your coffee cup every morning. So when you get your water bill uh, every four months, it's staggering sometimes. But uh, remember the benefit. Enjoy your day in Clayton. Bye. Uh, on our sponsors, I just want to thank our sponsors at first. Uncle Sam Boat Tours, Wellesley Island Building Supply, Swan Bay Resort, and Maitland Tower. Maitland Tower is a new sponsor this year. But many of these sponsors come back year after year to make this event successful. Before introducing today's presenters, I'd like to give you an update on Save the River. We're working with a highly motivated staff and an engaged and involved board, and there are a lot of exciting projects and progress to report on today. Beach Watch, last summer's water quality testing program was successfully completed with only two failures all season. Those sites pass New York State criteria very soon thereafter. We want to thank our dedicated volunteers, Dan Throop, Andrea Becker, Ron Daly, John and Charlie Johnson, Jim McGarry, Shannon Walter, Bridget Wright, and intern Bridget McCann for making this program such a success. PFAS, PER and polyfluoroalkylate substance testing. Save the River participated in last summer's PFAS testing completed by most of the North American water keepers. Since the 1950s, PFAS have been widely used in manufacturing and are found in many consumer, commercial, and industrial products. Examples in wide use include surface coatings like Teflon, Scotchgard, Gore-Tex. PFAS are also found in flame retardants and firefighting foams. They're often referred to as forever chemicals. PFAS do not break down over time and they accumulate in living things. Scientific studies increasingly link these toxic chemicals to serious health conditions such as cancer, liver and kidney disease, reproductive issues, immunodeficiencies, and hormonal disruptions. In spite of the serious health risks, there are currently no universal science-based limits on various PFAS. We are only just beginning to realize how pervasive these chemicals are. Save the River is working on an effort with other Great Lakes water keepers for a second, more comprehensive round of PFAS testing this year. A paper addressing PFAS and freshwater fish has just been published. That's not a good story. Trash Free River. What a great year for our Trash Free River initiative. In 2022, Save the River's crew of 215 volunteers hauled 4,900 pounds of debris from the river's shorelines from Wilson's Bay near Cape Vincent to Oak Point past Chippewa Bay. Save the River also partnered with the Thousand Islands Association on cleanups on the Canadian side of the river. Our cleanups are community-based and volunteer-powered. 
We focus on the riparian zone, about 10 feet into the water and 10 feet up on the shoreline. Thank you to our many volunteers that participated last year and to our sponsors that helped make these events possible. The Leonard C. and Mildred F. Ferguson Foundation, Labatt's National Grid, International Coastal Cleanup Team Seas, Community Bank, On the River Construction, and Fresh Sound Foundation. Education, Lauren Eggleston, Chelsea Broughton, Robin Hall, and our superb education committee, led by Heather White, continue to offer meaningful education experiences to students in the North Country schools. Last year, our educators reached over 2,000 students through on the water, in the classroom, and summer programming. We'll hear more about Save the Rivers education programs later during WEC from Lauren and Robin. Shoal marking. Many volunteers continue to help save the river year after year, float and remove shoal markers. Save the River continues to receive significant support from the Thousand Islands Association with the donation of these expensive shoal markers. We also want to acknowledge donations from Ryman's and Garlock's for the anchor chain needed to secure the markers and storage and heavy lifting help from Rick and Andy Gregware from Northern Marine. We're always looking for more volunteers to help on this very important project. Save the will be working this year with TIA to improve our shoal marking chart and the ability to track down markers that go floating during the season. Turns. Last summer was a disappointment for us in our program to restore and ban the threatened common turn. Our upriver nav cells and tilts natural shoal sites suffered from pre predation from great horned owls and mink. However, Jim McGarry's two nav cell sites further downriver had excellent numbers of chicks banded and fledged. You'll be hearing from Jim and Dr. Lee Harper later in the program about turn management and the hard work that goes into this program. Adopt a Turn is a new program initiative to fund our common turn conservation efforts. Sponsors are able to select and receive an adoption kit. There are currently three adoption levels, nest, egg and chick, and an adult banded turn. Adoption kits come with photos, an e-card, updates at the beginning and end of the breeding season, and an official adoption certificate and more. They can be purchased at Save the River. Household Hazardous Waste Collection Days program. In partnership with the Development Authority of the North Country Dank, Save the River is helping to coordinate the Household Hazardous Waste Collection Days program in the Thousand Islands. Save the River has long been concerned with the challenges of removing legacy and household chemicals from islands and shoreline homes before the chemicals deteriorate in their containers and leak into the river. Save the River is making arrangements to have a hazardous waste material contractor come to Clayton this summer on August 19th to be available to accept chemicals from islanders and river residents. Fishing line recycling devices, in partnership with TIA, Chelsea has installed several of these devices at strategic locations in the Thousand Islands to encourage people to pick up and recycle their fishing line. The collected line will be sent to the Berkeley Fishing Line Company to recycle. We've expanded the FLIRS program to include Cape Vincent and Hammond for 2023. We collected four miles of fishing line in 2022. Catch and release. This photo is of Sidney Floyd, winner of Save the Rivers 2022 Bass Catch and Release Contest. The presentation for the 2022 Dantac Muskie Catch and Release Tournament for the largest successfully caught and released muskie in the upper St. Lawrence River will be awarded later in our program by Jeff Garnsey. And fun fact Friday, on a mission to spread our message to younger audiences, Chelsea launched Fun Fact Friday on our social media platforms. 
These are short 30 second to one minute facts focused on the St. Lawrence River and Great Lakes. With over a thousand views each week, we've developed quite a following. Chelsea, sort of wave your hand so people know where you are. She'll be around all day. Chelsea's become a rock star with this program. The challenge is facing the river. There are many challenges facing the river as Save the River moves into our 45th year. Invasive carp, microplastics, ballast water exchange, aquatic invasive species, PFAS pollution in our waters and fish, non-functioning septic systems, concentrated animal feed operations, CAFOs, allowing pollutant into the river and its tributaries, and pushback on Plan 2014's environmental benefits. Save the River intends to remain an active participant of the public advisory group in phase two of the IJC's accelerated review of Plan 2014. Wellesley Island Customs Night Lighting. Save the River has been working with customs officials at the new Wellesley Island Customs area on concerns about excessive night lighting at the facility. While recognizing the need for bright lights to protect the officers while they do their work at the border, the light is excessive and is spilling over into the wetlands, river, and into neighbors' houses and yards. It will affect the fish, birds, insects, people, and the safety of boaters running at night in the area. Lighting designed properly does not have to be excessive to protect the border patrol agents. Save the River has been working with area neighbors, customs officials, and representatives from Congresswoman Stefanik's office in an attempt to find a solution that will resolve this problem, and we will continue to do so. A ban of non-encapsulated polystyrene and new floating docks. You can see examples of non-encapsulated polystyrene that has been broken down by ice, waves and winds, and the burrowing of animals in these photos. Save the River's proposed legislation to New York State legislators banning the use of non-encapsulated polystyrene in new and renovated floating docks. The proposed legislation is being championed by New York State Senator Mark Walzik, who you'll see here in a minute, and is modeled after existing legislation in Ontario. Local dock builders are very supportive of this ban. Save Blind Bay, you'll hear much more about the plans to save Blind Bay later in the program. So looking back on the past few years, I think we have made substantial progress on most of these issues, but there still is a lot of work to do. Thank you to all of our members and sponsors for your support and help. With our staff and board, we are making progress on Save the River's mission to restore, preserve, and protect the Upper St. Lawrence River now and for generations to come through advocacy, education, research, and stewardship. Before introducing our first speaker, I would like to recognize Save the River's excellent staff that worked so hard to produce the Winter Environmental Conference. Lauren Eggleston, our assistant director. Bridget Wright, our development director. I think Bridget's out there collecting money. Chelsea Broughton, our outreach coordinator. Karen Clements, our office coordinator. I think Karen's out there still, too. Robin Hall, our education coordinator. I see Robin over there. <laughs> and, and Linda Wright, who isn't here with us, but Linda is uh, our bookkeeper, and she keeps us on the straight and narrow and does a wonderful job.